Ice Cream Man issue one. I don't know how to feel about this book. Well, I guess I do. I enjoyed it. But there's some moments that kind of took me out, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So issue one, Raspberry Surprise, written by W.L. W.L. W. Maxwell Prince, art by Martin Morazzo, colors by Chris O'Halloran, lettering by good old Neon. And there's everyone else that worked on the book. And as I just said, the print date on this was January 2018. Now we open up in this sort of picaresque suburban area. We got the ice cream man giving out stuff. And you can see the guy is just really nice, personable, knows the community by name. He's like, looky here, is that little Miss Mitt Penny Peterson I see? Golly, you're getting big. And you'd think just for a moment that we're like, damn, is this the 50s? But it's not. And what I like is as we get to this little boy, he goes, and who do we have next? And we just see this, hi. Say, where are your mom and dad, kid? I'm a big boy. A man of self-profession. I can certainly appreciate that. What will it be then, Mr. Big and Tall? Two chocolate scoops. Lickety split, fast as can be. You get home safe, all right? Now, I just love how, again, just that moment of that 50s like Americana moment is cut when we just see this boy by himself. And then that's where we start to see that things aren't exactly uh, right in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. It says the Brazilian Wandering Spider. I am going to try to pronounce its uh, other name. It's one of the most dangerous, deadly spiders recognized by the world of spider catalog. The genius name for... Yeah, you can get that. I'm not even going to go there. But they call it the murderous. In fact, in 2010, the Guinness Book of World Records granted this charming arachnid an official title. World's Most Venomous Spider. Now, if you guys have not read this series and you don't want any spoilers, pause this review, come back, and you're back. Because what I'm trying to get at here is just remember how they're talking about poisonous venom, things like that, because it becomes a theme. Like it's, a, it's a thematic part of this story. So this little boy comes and you see he's letting himself in, kind of like a latchkey kid from the genera Generation X thing. However, check this out. Loss of muscle control, strange contortions, painful inflammation, crippling instant paralysis. He's getting a paper or a clothespin out, puts it on his nose. And in some cases, whatever parapism is, I'm not sure what that means. Or... For the lame person, an absolute lethal and unprovoked, never-ending erection. Okay, well, <laughs> the more you know, I guess. But he comes in, hi, Rupert, which we see the spider. He goes, Mom, Dad, I'm home, and boy, am I ever hungry. Most venomous. Ain't that something? And that's how we're brought into this universe. We go from, again, that 1950s picaresque Americana fill to what the fuck is happening? And that's how the book starts. Then we get brought into the other side of town, homicide department. And this is where, if you're not sure who we're talking about, which I feel like they should have done up close instead of a wide shot. But anyway, that aside, this is, now again, if I butcher the names, you're free to make fun of me. This is Detective Jalo, Jalio Juan. Her callers call it, or her callers, her colleagues call her 5V, in reference to the fact that her first name, Chinese for most beautiful willow, contains all five vowels of the English alphabet. Why that's important, don't know, but it's there. Now, we start with the crazy cat lady. That's him. That's the thing of a critter from the woods. He ate Mr. Buttersworth. I say it like that because. If you look at her, and I don't know if this was an artistic choice, but it makes you, it looks like the crazy cat lady from The Simpsons that <laughs> throws the cat at people. Yeah. So they try to write it off as crazy cat lady, but um, I'm going to call her 5V because trying to remember Jolio, Jolio, is that it? I'm just going to call her 5V. Her and her partner then are brought in because of missing uh, parents or people, of the, citizens, shall we say. Tom and Henrietta McAllister, both reported MIA by their respective employers about 10 days ago. Separate careers, da 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 And they're thinking tax evasion. They think maybe that they're off on a beach somewhere. But then they say he had, they have a kid. Look familiar? And that's, again, where we cut to this little boy out in the woods. 
And like I said, we don't know what to think of this ice cream man. Now, taking a pause on the story, the story in itself I like because it, it just it's very uncomfortable, very grimy, gritty, under girth of the world. The artwork, in retrospect, I didn't like it when I first went through this book, but I don't think the artwork is meant to be pretty. So if you look at the faces, they just look very contorted and other worldly and i think that is the artistic choice because it's not clean like you would see like in a batman or superman type book especially here like <laughs> i hate to say it we'll get back into how i like the narrative in a minute but the artistic choice i i have to say this because i just been thinking about it and thinking about it but when they do this close-up of her face we got mr no lips here and then she's kind of got her teeth up, and I swear, I look at her, and I just, I want to go, ha, ha, hey, bye, us, ha, That's just what I see, because Butthead always had his teeth sticking out like that. So again, I think the characters are not supposed to be pretty in this world. But that particular panel, I was like, oh, God, this guy has no lips. His, his nose is just, like, almost flat with his cheeks, and then he's got, like, these hanging jowls. But yeah. Yeah, anyway, okay. Back to the story, because again, the story is really good. It goes, here's a secret about life, which I'll tell you for free. It sounds like we're getting ready to do a Dr. Uh, Seuss thing, right? We're all being devoured by bugs. Slowly but surely, our little internal insects, boredom, loneliness, regret, etc., are eating us whole, nibbling away inside out. The process only lasts as long as you. And while that's happening, the 5V hears this weird voice that goes, I've got cockroaches crawling all over my brain, and they're telling me to cheat on my wife. What? And he's like, I said, do you read that memo about the changes to our pensions? It's fucking bullshit. And so we're kind of snapped back to reality, and like, oh, um, I didn't get a chance. So you see that something is amiss in this town overall. And of course, we've already been to this this uh, house. And again, she sees the TV. Sour balls and cherry blasters and lickety splits. Something sweet for everyone. Something sweet for the bugs to eat. And then this is where we see the parents. We kind of, again, go back to what they were talking about with the poisonous of the spider. And then think about life again, which I like how they make the suburbanites here look ugly. It just adds to the story. Um, something happens with the partner. 5V tries to tell the kid to put the spider down, but he's like, he's like, okay, we'll, we'll figure this out. I just, I just need you to put down the, you're not taking him. And so she has to chase after his ass. And um, all of a sudden, a weird freaking vam uh, werewolf vampire. I don't want to go show the whole panel because it's actually a really nice piece, but I want you guys to read this series. It runs when it sees the spider and the gun. And I love how after the moment is gone, she lays down. She goes, what's your name, kid? B -b Brian or Byron. Fuck you, Brian. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about going to my local comic shop, maybe getting the trade of this series. Because again, as we're talking about the venom that slowly creeps in you all through your life, and we're hearing these voices about spiders crawling on our bugs, on our brains, our bugs. Again, we see the inside of uh, Picaresque America and what happens behind closed doors. There's a flavor for everyone's suffering. Make no mistake. Everyone is suffering. So again, the artistic choice. I think if you think about the, the style and you go back to like Grant Morrison's new X-Men, now I know where that artwork reminds, it reminds me of um, Mark Bagley's work on new X-Men. Could be wrong. But that's just kind of where I see this artist's inspiration, which kind of gives it that very ugly, jagged line look. And it works for the ice cream man. I don't know. I, I didn't like it when I first read it, but now going back with y'all, I uh, I kind of want to go get issue two now. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. If you guys have enjoyed what you've seen, please first and foremost support your local comic shop or wherever it is like to get your action figures and comics. 
and grab this series. I'm I'm hooked. Damn it. <laughs> and if you've enjoyed this review, I really appreciate if you take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. Helps the channel more than you could possibly know. And if you don't mind hitting that fancy little flavor bell next, subscribe. That way as I can tip content, you guys get notified. Come to the channel, and I love talking with y'all and hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or the socials, which I'll make sure they have the links down in the description. So with all that said, I hope y'all continue to have a delicious day reading and happy hunting, everyone.